JWST is constantly observing some of the coolest objects in deep space. And in this video, I want to talk about three of the incredible discoveries that it's recently made. Three amazing things in one video. So be sure to stick around for all of them and give me your opinion on everything JWST has recently seen. We're talking a killer nova from merging neutron stars. We're talking Supernova 1987A, one of the most famous remnants out there. And we're talking incredible images of galaxies. We'll start with what, to me at least, was the most surprising observation. JWST witnessed a kilonova explosion caused by the merging of two neutron stars. Now, merging objects like neutron stars and black holes are most well known for the gravitational waves they create that we can observe in our L-shaped gravitational wave detectors, such as LIGO, Virgo and CAGRA. Recently though, JWST was part of a multi-telescope campaign to image an incredibly bright gamma ray burst, now named GRB 2300 0307A. What a mouthful. The most likely cause of this GRB was the merging of two neutron stars. Unfortunately, it wasn't seen in any of our gravitational wave detectors, but it was seen by many other telescopes. This so-called kilonova, the massive explosion as the two neutron stars collided together, is remarkable for a couple of reasons. The explosion itself is visible here as the faint red smudge, and other than imaging it, the telescope also took the first ever mid-infrared spectrum of a kilonova from space. This lets us break down the light we receive from the explosion and look for specific elements present in the event. Here, we saw a strong detection of an element called tellurium, which is similar in nature to sulfur and selenium, and as rare on Earth as platinum is. Kilonova explosions slam together protons, neutrons and electrons, and are where many of the heavy elements, including very valuable and rare ones, get made. We expect elements essential to life, such as iodine, to have also been produced in the aftermath of this explosion. You aren't just made of star stuff, you're made of kilonova stuff, and I think that's beautiful. This gamma ray burst was a very long-lived one, making it especially rare, and meaning that JWST's analysis of it is particularly useful. Another amazing thing about it is that it wasn't located inside a galaxy. We have been able to work out that this galaxy here is where the stars were born and found each other to become a binary pair, but the explosion happened very far away. At the time that they were in the galaxy, they were normal massive stars orbiting each other. One of them then exploded and went supernova, but it didn't break apart their bond. This was shortly followed by the second star also going supernova, so it didn't feel left out. Luckily, these explosions didn't destroy the stars, but rather collapsed them down into neutron stars and flung them out into deep space. It's amazing that they stayed gravitationally bound together despite two explosions flinging them out into space, but their orbit has decayed over time, and they eventually merged, producing one final explosion that we saw in our telescopes. Next up, we have the amazing observation that JWST has made of the famous supernova remnant, simply called Supernova 1987A, or SN 1987A for short. This is because it's a supernova whose remnant was discovered in 1987, and the A tells us that it was the first supernova discovered that year. It's located 168,000 light years away in the Large Magellanic Cloud, a dwarf galaxy that orbits the Milky Way. It's been imaged countless times by many, many telescopes, including all the old favourites like Hubble, Chandra and ALMA. Now JWST has used its near-infrared camera NERCAM to add to this intense studying of the remnant, and the image it produced is stunning. This is what is left when a blue supergiant star explodes. The centre has a sort of keyhole structure, and is packed full of clumpy dust and gas that was ejected by the explosion. This dust is so thick and dense that even the infrared light that JWST observes can't penetrate it fully, and this almost shadow is what gives us the hole in the centre of the remnant. There is then a bright equatorial ring around this keyhole shape. This forms a band around the waist that connects two faint hourglass-shaped outer rings. 
I think these outer rings are actually easier to pick out in the Hubble image for me, but the overall structure of the central region is better defined in this new JWST image. Another example of these two awesome telescopes working together. The main equatorial ring is mostly made of material that was actually thrown off the star tens of thousands of years before it went supernova. It also contains many bright spots, which appeared as the powerful shockwave from the supernova smashed into this ring of material. There are then also bright spots showing up externally to the ring with diffuse emission showing up around them, and these again formed as supernova shocks hit into more exterior material. Material. So this is an old classic, but it's always nice to see an old friend get a new photo. These improvements are just amazing. For our third object, let's zoom out now and have a look at almost an entire galaxy. This is a barred spiral galaxy called M83, and it's been observed by both NERCAM and the mid-infrared instrument on JWST called MIRI. This is the mid-infrared image, and this is the near-infrared image. Clearly the same galaxy, but still very different images. M83 is 15 million light years away, and while the JWST images are very zoomed in, if we look at it with a telescope with a wider field of view, we can really see its pinwheel spiral-like structure. In near-infrared wavelengths, we see stars that might be obscured by dust if we looked at M83 with other wavelengths, such as visible light. Stars are intrinsically brighter in visible light, but it's also scattered much more by dust grains, while infrared light has a longer wavelength, and therefore hits into dust grains less often. This lets the light sneak through dusty regions and escape into space, letting us see it, and hence letting us see into these dusty galaxies. The bright red and pink spots are regions that are full of ionized hydrogen, meaning there's lots of star formation there. The bluer light in the central region shows a population of older stars, while compact light blue regions within the red areas show us young star clusters. In the mid-infrared image, we see beautiful tendrils of dust and gas and stars. In this image, the bright blue shows the distribution of stars through the center of the galaxy. Active stellar nurseries where stars are being born are shown in yellow colors that weave through the spiral arms while the red and orange areas show the presence of something called polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. These are carbon-based compounds and may be essential for creating life, especially carbon-based life forms like us. Finally, through the gaps in all of this dust, we can see countless stars shining in this galaxy. I would love to hear your thoughts on all of these things in the comments below. Which do you think was the coolest for science and which was the prettiest image? Let me know down there and thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye!